Being trans to me is an act of resistance um, in a world that tends to kind of stifle us. That's the beautiful thing about young people. I mean, they, they are really out there being who they are. I never had that experience. So when I look at it, I just think it's a really beautiful thing. I came out three years ago, and I knew at about eight years old. That was like late 1960, 69. And there was no transgender. It wasn't even a word. And, uh, you know, I got dressed up with my next door neighbor and my sister's brown outfit. But as soon as I got home, you know, I tried to explain to my mother. I was like, you know, oh God, I just love this, you know. And she was like, listen, you've got to take that off. Your father's about to come home. You know, he'll essentially murder you. You know, those are not her exact words, but you know, I knew you then. And uh, the feeling kind of never left me. And, and then I was, I was essentially in the closet for almost, almost 40 years. And on May 1st, 2017, I woke up and I was like, I woke up in the morning and I said, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't suppress it. When I initially came out as non-binary, um, I did not actually claim the term trans, specifically because of, you know, historical media depictions that often portrayed um, binary trans folks, and personally I did not quite identify with that. But, you know, upon doing more reading and kind of learning, um, at least in my own experience, that trans just are essentially is a way of articulating anything that is not cisgender and the fact that you know I don't necessarily identify with the gender that was assigned to me at birth. As I identify as a trans woman. Uh, for me it's very important because it's something I wanted my whole entire life. And I must say because uh, I was so indoctrinated as a male I got a lot of things wrong about women, about the way to look, about the way to act, about the way to be. I had a lot of sexist attitudes about the, and here I am, you know, wanting to be a woman. You know, so it was it was a real learning process for me. You know, people need to understand pronouns and pronoun usage. I call all the time on phone. It's really hurtful when I get on the call and I say my name is Jennifer and I say my pronouns and I repeatedly have to correct the person that, you know, you're using the wrong pronouns and once, twice, by the third time I've had enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I, you know, first came out as non-binary, it was a rather new thing in culture. Um, and I remember, like, really feeling the need to, like, express and um, proclaim my transness, even, like, explicitly and externally. And so, like, even though, like, the situation might not call for it, um, like, I would, like, force myself to like wear makeup and like wear high heels to my econ class in college. Like who does that? But of course, as more and more people have really started respecting my pronouns um, and have, you know, really normalized the use of they, them in reference to me, it's also helped me feel so much more secure in myself where I no longer feel the need to perform my transness explicitly. I love non-binary and I'll tell you why. Because it blows up gender, you know. That's the beautiful thing about I don't I, I don't identify as non-binary, but I think that in years to come, I think it's going to have a big effect on sexism, and I think we'll see a lot less sexism as a result of non-binary. So non-binary really is a beautiful thing. It's a very difficult concept, I have to say, for most people, particularly older generations, to really get. I think going forward. It's going to make the world a better place. It really will. It's my belief. My hope. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a dad. I identify as dad. I like being called dad. She has a mother. So, and my daughter is 21. And, you know, the only thing I ask her is, you know, if we're in, a, in an open space like this and you're 20 feet away, don't call for dad. And as you stated about your relationship with your daughter, um, I too am uh, a child of a Korean woman um, and also uh, am an older sibling to a Korean um, woman. And um, essentially, like my relationship with them as their son or as their brother is something very near and dear to my heart. And so like I share that to say that like with my mom, I have no intentions of ever coming out as transgender because I pride my relationship with her as her, um, as her son. And I think that that is what I would want 
older trans folks to know is that we're very complex people. Um, sometimes the trans identity is at the forefront, sometimes it's not, and that's perfectly fine. For an, an elder person, I think we have to do a better job listening, you know, and, and not sort of uh, dictating about how a person should be, you know. I think what you said about listening is also applicable to us as well. Yeah. What I yearn from for more young people is this idea of like respecting the people who have cr like created these spaces for us. And I think that, you know, sometimes that gets lost in translation. And um, especially kind of considering that for so many of us, it's really hard to imagine a life past 40 just because we haven't really seen any literature or resources surrounding kind of transgender longevity. Like, why not make the most by connecting with our elders who can speak to what it means like to imagine a life you know, past 40, and like that is only really accomplished by active listening and by essentially actively creating spaces where we can have these intergenerational conversations. We do have things in common. I really think my true takeaway right now is just kind of feeling very viscerally how important it is for us to continue to facilitate spaces where like people of different generations can interact. I think that we have seen quite a gap in that keeping in mind that our elders are also so important and that there needs to be some kind of intergenerational bridge um, as we continue to kind of collectivize and move forward. There is no way to be. The way to be is the way Jen wants to be. The way to be is the way June wants to be. Geminis are the best. Um, <laughs> and we will be keeping in contact. <laughs>